kind of pushing on the bottom all the way down to the bottom of the wheel. And notice I don't have a lot of clay out here floating around the rim. I want that all that bottom to stay right there. So you put your fingers all the way down to the wheel. And now to cone it up, one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to put your, you don't want to pop your elbow up and come down on it like this because what happens is you end up getting first of all it gets out of center very quickly and you end up getting this mushroom shape and that doesn't happen. So you can see that I've got a little ridge of clay right there and that's where my hand's been sitting. So this finger is sitting a little higher on the inside this one's sitting just a little bit lower so it's not exactly side by side as I'm coming up. This one's just a little bit lower. This one's a little high, higher. And so I'm making place. Um, I'm going to start to form my foot. I think I'm going to give myself, I'm going to give myself an edge. So I kind of want the outside to be right there. I kind of want the inside to be right there. So I'm going to just hit this corner just a little bit. A little bit more. I'm starting to form the foot so I, I like to have a curve on the foot. I don't like it straight up and down. I like there to be just a little curve just because it's a bowl and it kind of I think that curve enhances the the style of the bowl to have it have the inside so it sits on this outside rim. Now let's talk a little bit about smoothing and uh, polishing these final steps. So if I wanted to, I could leave it right here and, and I could do some finishing work with some sanding if I wanted to. Let me show you a couple of different options. So sometimes if the clay is still moist enough, you can use a rib like this to kind of do a little bit of polishing and sanding. Um, I love this rib because the edges are so fine that it doesn't leave any marks at all. So I can just set this on here let me clear that out. There we go. So I can just set this on here and that will just smooth the outside ridge and I'm really not pushing hard at all. I'm just letting the rib do a little bit of polish accidental or sloppy like you didn't intend that to happen. And then, and then really I'm just going to rub it around the rim just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. There aren't any flecks of clay. Let me see, there's a little bit there. Other than that, it looks like that's all that it needed. So really that's all that it needed for the sanding. Completely done and ready for the ready for the bisque firing. Let me touch that. That just gets off some of the glaze. And then I'm going to take it back over here and just set it. And let it just sit there for a minute. Just like that. And I'm ready to do another one. Now typically you're going to want to use a different sponge to wash it than you're going to use to, to wipe off the glazes and stuff. But since I've only done one and I'm only doing these two, I can actually do this. So remember I'm embraced. So I've got both arms on my legs like this and my left sponge is touching the outside and my inside finger is there and this side is actually touching that hand and kind of bracing it so it doesn't move. So I have all these points of contact to help things stay smooth and steady.
you a little bit about what this should look like on the inside. So I've thrown another bottle and cut it in half for you and I'll show you what that looks like. This is the, so this is what the, the, you want the bottle to look like. And so, so nice and even. Got a little bit uneven. There's a little bit of, on this one. There's a little bit of a bulge right there, so it isn't perfect, but fairly consistent all the way through. The bottom is nice and thin. Have just barely enough to make a foot on the bottom of this one. I probably have a little bit more on this. One.